A warm welcome to Helen White. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure. I've just got a few questions for you. The first one, given the loss of jobs, especially in the hospitality sector, how are you going to help create jobs in Auckland Central? I think that one of the things that going through this process of standing has taught me is that we are missing a link in the chain between central government and local government and people like business owners um, and actually tenants as well and re residents of our um, mm. electorate because um, it's been a while since we had somebody who was dedicated to that in the Labour Party yeah. um, because we lost the seat and then obviously Jacinda did a really good job as a list MP in that regard yeah. but there's no one who's been doing that job and it couldn't be a more critical time mm. for that job to be done. Um, then in the last week one of the things I've done is just brought um, Stuart Nash in to mm. talk to a few of um, the communities and one person we talked to was Viv Beck of Heart of a City mm. and then I took him up the road to K Road and we talked to the K Road Business Association but also some residents and some landlords actually in that area. You know these places have been, it isn't just COVID, it's just been a yeah. perfect storm. Yeah. They've had so much go on and it's so impossible in that situation to thrive if you're a little business yeah. and I run one myself so I know how yeah. hard it is. Yeah. So I felt like even in those meetings we made some progress yeah. in terms of the minister understanding and, it, and he was absolutely generous about ex, you know, understanding the problem because mm. there's all the will in the world but we actually need them to understand specifically what's going on for people in the city. Mm. So like some of the businesses have been affected by things like the fact that the rents have been unadjustable and I know Andrew Little and Stuart Nash have both been working on a solution there and have been a bit frustrated by our coalition yeah, partners yeah. but that's one thing but there's other things mm, too. Mm. Um, with small businesses there's also really one of the things is just you know that I've seen in the policy that's changed is that um, we haven't had basically the business the banks have been taking fees of every transaction. So if you're running a little business and you're like say you're running a bakery or a florist, mm. you've been paying on every transaction to the banks. And that is one of the policies of the um, Labour Party is that we're going to get rid of those completely. Mm. They have already in Australia. Mm. And so we know that saves every small business about $13,000. Which is a large amount. Yeah, it is. And, the, and, and hospitality, it should be bigger than that. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, it might be double that in yes. some cases. But yeah. obviously also the hospitality sector itself has been incredibly hard hit. Yeah. I, I know that people have thought about all sorts of solutions to this problem. I also know, because I do employment law, how many people actually go to run their own small business in something like hospitality because they don't want to work for anyone again mm. and they can just make ends meet. So I know how thin the actual amount that they're making is mm. in hospitality. Mm. I mean, it's actually really small in comparison to almost any other retail sector. Yeah. And yeah. I think we actually need to make some special provisions around hospitality mm. Mm. and I think there's the will to do it but yeah. actually we need to feed back the experiences of our businesses in the city particularly mm. hospo to our ministers and if the Labour Party forms the next government it's really vital someone's doing that for Auckland Central. Yeah thank you. What are your plans for Auckland's infrastructure and transport? So obviously they're underway, I mean there's yeah. just so much, you wouldn't want to kind of add to that anymore. I think there are some things that um, are, are links we need to make. One is that things like busways have actually been incredibly effective, much more than we thought they would. They're not very sexy, but they work, mm. and so we actually need to make sure that shovel ready money goes into those, that they don't get compromised just because mm. our council's under strain. Yeah. And then there's things like actually, there's, there's actually living in the city, which we don't sort of think of as a transport solution, but it is. Mm. Because if people live in the place they work, they don't travel. And I think we do need to make sure that that happens. 
we also need to make the city a lot nicer for people to live in so they mm. can. I mean, we're losing most of our old people and our children. I think it's, you know, more than other electorates. And that's because it's really hard to live in the city yeah. if you're at either end of that spectrum. Mm. So we need a, a much more walkable, livable city. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really is important. And it's important to Ponsonby too. Mm. Like, Ponsonby has suffered from this. It's, it's yeah. not under the same degree of pressure, perhaps as places like um, K Road, because it hasn't got those big like works going on, public works. Mm. Like K Road's actually got two projects that have happened at the same time. So it wasn't supposed to happen like that, but it did. So the noise levels are just awful. Mm. But obviously moving around the city affects Ponsonby as well. Yeah, yeah. I, this question's a little bit similar to the first one, but I don't know if you want to say anything else on it. How are you planning to support SMEs during this economic recession? That's quite similar to question one. It is, one. but in a way, maybe I can just deepen my answer a bit. I mean, in some ways I feel like that actual personal connection with people is really important. The sort of networks of people that are working really hard in the city. Nobody does their job um, in a mean-spirited way around our city you know there's yeah. lots of people who are doing good things and have contributions to make and I see the local MP as having a really special role yeah. in listening to those people and connecting those people and making sure that there's a coordination so I would actually love to see um, a working party in government yeah. and it wouldn't have to exclude the opposition but where we get the people who are really important um, to Auckland Central getting moving again and working well mm. together and they need to be actually networked into people who actually um, are important in terms of feeding back from those small businesses. Yeah. I think also in a big city one of the things in the super city that I've noticed is there's a sort of disconnect and it's the bad side of the super city mm. where people just don't they don't really even know their local board members, let alone their councillors, yeah. let alone their yeah. mayor. Yeah. So it's about making sure that those people actually still have a voice. Yeah. And actually the local MP has always had that kind of role where they can be yeah. the person who listens to that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's an incredibly interesting journey I'm on mm. because people are coming and telling me things. Yeah. And some of them are surprising. You know, they yeah. won't necessarily say what I'd expect them to say in their position. Yeah. And it's a it's one thing I've done in my work a lot. I, I work as an employment lawyer at the moment. And basically, I am dealing with people of all different walks of life. And I, I hear interesting things. And yeah. it's yeah. a bit of a job I love. Yeah. What should the incoming government do about taxation? Well, they've got um, a progressive tax system that they've promoted as their policy which is um, and they've made a very strong promise that they will not introduce a capital gains tax so that's because people rejected it so overwhelmingly yeah. so we have a system in place I think things like uh, making sure um, that people keep more money in their pockets is a pretty important thing too, you know, yeah. I just alluded to one. And actually closing down the loopholes that mean multinationals have been getting away with blue murder. Yeah. Um, that's a really important one. Yes, so, of course. Yeah. Do you think New Zealand has an inequality problem? And if so, what would you do about it? Yes, it's why I'm here. Um, we have a very big inequality problem. And like in my work in employment law, I just watch that become impossible for people. Like, when, when you take an employment case, if you don't actually earn even $100,000, you're in real trouble. You don't have the capacity to see through uh, the solution that's there at the moment mm. to your problem. Mm. And people are very isolated. And I mean, I think there are, you know, if there are very big connectors, you know, we talk about things like, family violence and homelessness. These things don't happen out of nothing. They happen because of the stress on people. Yeah. And it's really, really hard at the moment for people on low incomes. And mm. it's almost one of the things that frightened me, Martin, was watching people that I knew on good incomes almost not understand people on low incomes anymore. 
it was like we were losing empathy with each other and I yeah. remember like people would use terms like winners and losers and I hate that kind of language I've always hated it but it was out there mm -hmm. and it was driving yeah. a philosophy which meant that we had people sleeping on our streets yeah yeah this is a question for me and, and John glyphosate ah. <laughs> commonly found in her in Roundup has been declared a carcinogen by the WHO scientist. Would you call for it to be banned on our berms, parks and reserves in Auckland Central? Well, I think um, the first thing you need to know is I also had a ban around my house. I have, I notified the council and that I didn't on the want no spray. spraying. Yeah, yeah, a no spray. spray. And I, did, I was like, unaware until you guys brought it up and actually another constituent brought it up, um, that this was even going on. So basically they have to investigate what's, what on earth's going on there. Right, um, right. It is it's obviously, poison. but also it's something that there has been a regime of asking people and people notifying. And what I understand is that at least one person has fed back to me that they found that the spraying was happening without their agreement when they yeah. had been on the no spray list. I know. It's yeah. happened to friends of mine where they've sprayed next door and they've got an organic garden and the spray comes across like that. Of course, yeah. Who other than returning New Zealanders, Helen, should we let into New Zealand in the next, say, six months? Mm, good question. <laughs> I think um, it's obviously an enormous exercise bringing people in and we have also people other, well, returning New Zealanders is a broad range. We yeah. have lots of of challenges in terms of returning New Zealanders too. Yeah. Like for example, we have people being expelled from Australia who have convictions, who have New Zealand citizenship, but they haven't necessarily ever lived here and they are coming across our borders and we're going to have to manage that whole situation too because we've got to be very careful that that, that doesn't turn into a, a very alienated population who again present a huge challenge. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's problems and problems here. Um, I would really like to see us restore our refugee commitments and make sure that we are taking the number of refugees we did. Yeah. Um, that's important to me personally. Um, I think um, it's, you know, it's a, it, a, that's something I'd like to make sure happens if I can. Yeah. Obviously, even if I win the seat, I'm not going to be in charge. I'm going to be a participant. Yeah. But it is a priority for me. My yeah. my mother was the principal at Selwyn College when they took the Tampa refugees under Helen Clark, mm. and um, it gave me an enormous insight into how valuable what we do yeah. with regard to refugees is. Mm. Um, but obviously, we've also got groups like um, we've got to bring in people who are um, critical to our projects and particular yeah. infrastructure projects and that is happening yeah. um, but that's a very very important thing yeah. because it affects us all in terms of progress in this yeah. city yeah. and then we've got to think about our education sector you know there have been so many people hard hit there um, yeah. you know the English um, language schools yeah that sort it's of... pretty harsh it's um, obviously it's um, there are schools that have been here for 50 years and they have just, you know, been in a devastating situation. Um, and they will pivot, no doubt. They will, mm. you know, run longer courses. Um, and so that when people do come in and they isolate, it's worth their while. Yeah, yeah. But um, it is a sector which um, is a really big part of Auckland's um, yeah. business community and, yeah, and our yeah. vitality. Yes. What is one policy you would like to introduce in the first year? of the government, a new government. Yeah, so I'm gonna go for something a bit unusual here because I think that there are lots of policies that the Labour Party are bringing in and I quite like people to know a little bit about what I would like to stick in what we call the biscuit tin. Right. Right, which is this um, tin you get to put a private member's bill in. And there's some pretty important little changes. Well, you just write a note and put it in. No, there. you actually write, you, you actually come up with a kind of comprehensive piece of legislation and the rules have just changed. So you used to just be randomly pulled out 
and it didn't matter you just happen to be lucky or not lucky. Trevor yeah. Mallard's never had anything pulled out of the biscuit tin. But some people have had three or four things pulled out of the biscuit tin. Oh. Yeah. So um, obviously in my area of law, there are things I see which really hurt people. And other people don't know about them. And that's because of my field of work. So I would have, to be fair, a dozen things to stick in that yeah. biscuit, biscuit tin. But I'll just pick maybe one or two. One is I would really like to see um, actually some reform in the restraint of trade area. Now, it doesn't sound like that would affect people, but actually it affects people setting up small businesses. Yeah. Because um, take somebody who... Um, they're on an individual agreement and they've signed something up which says they can't work for six months. Mm. They might be on $20 an hour and they can't work in their own field mm. for six months. Although that's prima facie illegal at law, which means that it shouldn't be enforceable, yeah. most people who've signed on the dotted line think it is enforceable. Mm. And to prove it isn't would cost them maybe $8,000, $10,000. They're also scared that somebody's going to sue them. Mm. So they don't go and set up their little business. And that means they don't actually earn as much as they can. Mm. And actually, um, it's been, you know, something that's contributed to the gap between rich and poor. Yeah. And I would love to see it change. Mm. Mm. Do you think the incoming government should appoint a minister for animals? Oh, it's an interesting one. Do you know that we are the only um, government in the world that has already recognised the sentient nature of animals? Which I think that we should be very proud of. And you can thank Trevor Mallard for that. I think he's a vegetarian. <laughs> and um, I think it's a really good sign that we've done that. And yeah. obviously there's a lot of um, difficulty around that given we have an economy that's based on agriculture mm. um, but obviously um, there are also issues around things like the cruelty to animals yeah. that we've yeah. seen yeah. Um, and you know really keeping our eye on the ball so mm. I actually think um, it's Maybe not a minister of it, but a focus on it's important. From somebody Animal else. Animal welfare. Well, I think we can set up ministries all we like, but what we actually need is a will to see that even it all aligns. Going that way, making sure that we have free range mm. animals. Mm. Um, you know, we are being, uh, you know, we've got some good standards around things like free range eggs, for example. Mm. I can't really see why we should have anything but. Um, yeah. the standard set and I can't see that it would hurt our economy because it is the sort of thing where we can get a premium mm. if we can actually um, if, we, if we've got a reputation just like we're clean and green if we've got a reputation for being reliable in the way we treat animals yeah. I think there's more and more of a market for that. Yeah. Will you vote yes or no to the cannabis legislation and control? I'm going to vote yes I totally respect that there's a really strong um, view the other way and that it's based often on people's traumatic experiences of, of watching people use cannabis and get really hurt by it yeah. and I don't want to discount it. I think it's actually um, something that for me I have um, thought about through the lens of my work and I have seen the difference in the way that people are treated with alcohol and marijuana. Mm. And that for me feels like hypocrisy because I have had people in my life who've been affected by alcohol mm. in a really bad way. And I think both have real problems. Um, actually, none of my children drink. I, I think, well, maybe my daughter, my youngest daughter does. But mm. there's quite a strong group of people now who are seeing the dangers of that. And I think that treating both as dangerous and actually hurting people, but health issues, mm. addiction mm. as health issues, is also part of a compassionate treatment of those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Will you vote yes or no to the end of life bill? I'm going to vote no. And again, what I can say is I have got friends with the opposite view I totally respect about their view. Mm. It's a really hard one. The reason I'm voting no is that in, uh, again, maybe because of my work in power, you know, I, I guess I got interested in employment because there's a power dynamic and yeah. there's often a problem. I feel that one of the things about um, the end of life is understanding that those power issues can be very 
uh, much within the person. Yeah. They can feel the pressure on them. Um, and I have seen a little bit of that in my life. I think mm. we're very tribal as people. Mm. And sometimes, and I know it's simplistic, but I think about, look, people were prepared to go over those trenches in World War I, even though they might not have believed in the war. And they actually yeah. died. And I yeah. think, you know, we work tribally. We're not people that are disconnected yeah. in that way. Yeah. And even though it's really hard, um, that's the line I've fallen on. Yeah. But I totally hear arguments on the other side where I go, mm, yeah. am I right? Yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah. yeah. I've only got one more question. Would you increase the superannuation age from 65? Mm. Yes or no? Um, I, if it was my personal choice, no. Um, I think we've got a lot of worn out workers and um, I think that we, it's lovely that people work much later now. My father's 89 and buzzing around like, you know, there's no tomorrow. It's great if you keep your health to be able to do that. Um, I think that actually incomes have been so low yeah, and yeah. people have worked so hard and I mm. think we need to get our life balance right yeah, and yeah. people need to share work more mm. we need to lower how many hours people are doing yeah. and be more um, reasonable about it of course we also need mm. to hire the wages because people just don't have savings lots of people don't no, you're right hey um, you've got a minute why should why should people in central Auckland vote for you on okay. the on the 17th so i think there's been it's been a very interesting election and you know we've had these three very strong women standing in the seat and the thing that i really want to address is the sort of almost elephant in the room here i am quite a strong left-wing woman i have been doing employment law for about 27 years I am very, very pragmatic about the way I give advice to my clients because I'm mindful that they don't often have much money. That work compelled me or propelled me into standing in this electorate, but I also grew up here and I have seen the city become less and less affordable. So the two issues for me connect and I think it's very important we have a representative right now that is from the Labour Party, if they're going to be in government in particular, that can connect with Jacinda because she knows this electorate and loves it and it's her team and I think I can do that job. Yeah. I think it's really important that people understand that it is not, we are not inevitably going to have a left-wing candidate mm -hmm. um, win this seat. We have got a poll um, situation on Sunday that came out that it shows me at 35, Emma Mello at 30, and Chloe at 26. I saw it. Yeah, and there is an element, I've always said it, of we can't be complacent. We cannot split the left-leaning vote. We need to actually make sure we have someone strong from the left mm -hmm. in the seat mm -hmm. that's connecting all those pieces together yeah. and I can do that job and I know and respect Chloe and she's going to be there so if you're thinking about that side of the divide you know please think pragmatically mm -hmm. I've done it all my life thought pragmatically yeah. and there's nothing wrong with it a tactical vote in Auckland Central is a vote for me Thank you very much, Helen Thank White. You. Thank you Great. for coming along today and spending time with us. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure.